I am Johansson Aid, the president of NACA. It gives me great pleasure to share with you some of my thought, our thoughts and what we have done in response to the COVID-19 uh, challenges in education. Before I start, I always like to start with just reminding ourselves what has COVID-19 done? Well, we know that Corona has disrupted all levels of our education systems. Most higher education institutions have applied some kind of a hybrid or online form of education. And yet still, everybody now is still anticipating a second shutdown. Online teaching is often confused with education. So people say we're doing online education, hybrid education, but actually it is just teaching. And are we actually maintaining or are we sure of quality of the teaching material and teaching itself? Quality assurance agencies have been caught off guard. Assuring the quality of online education is becoming very challenging. There is, we're all living in culture shock, but it's students, lectures, even the quality assurance agencies. Assessment methods are still not synchronized with learning objectives. And one thing that I've been raising lately is that nobody is really addressing weak students and students with disabilities. We all are talking about how people, how those who do not have access to internet and the equity or equality in, in, in learning, but actually nobody is looking after students with disabilities. So, and what about quality assurance in the post-COVID or from the post-COVID perspective? How do we maintain quality? Do we have to have new standards, guidelines, governance? What exactly? Are education institutions stable and functional? Are students safe? Are the necessary skills being imparted to students? And actually, what about CBE, competency-based education? And more relevantly, what about practical dis disciplines such as engineering and medicine? Now, let's ask this other question, what have we done? And before I answer this question, um, I would like to remind ourselves with the following facts. Quality assurance and accreditation cannot flourish except in a stable educational ecosystem. Quality assurance during the pandemic and even up till now, uh, I'm not sure yet, might not have been the, at the forefront of everybody's mind, nor the priority. Yet this cannot go on indefinitely. So at the agency, we assume the role a responsive role. We step back to allow higher education institutions to finish an unprecedented academic year. We suspended and postponed all scheduled accreditation visits. Well, of course, we had to. There was no education. So what were we going to go out and look at? And we helped the institutions by extending the status. So no, no higher education institution will be affected by what's happening. We expanded our online accreditation procedures. We developed a hybrid accreditation visit, which is what I'm going to elaborate on uh, in a few minutes. And um, we started offering online training for effect effective teaching and learning. And we started preparing guidelines for quality regulations for an online teaching, learning and assessment. In response to COVID-19, we started planning for the unexpected. We started offering technical support and we developed the hybrid type system visit to evaluate what higher education institutions are doing in the pandemic. What were the measures were taken during the shutdown? What was the technical support and training offered to faculty members, students and staff? How, how was assessment performed during the shutdown? How would health and safety measures apply to deal with the pandemic? And how are they applying the new hybrid system? So what is our hybrid? Or virtual actual visit. We started by uh, developing this based on a few facts. We uh, wanted to reduce the actual contact time, enforce safety measures to all involved parties, be students, staff, faculty members, or the reviewers, maintaining social distance, aligning with government policies, assuring the credibility and and integrity of all accreditation visits and mim mimicking or mim emulating what's uh, the activities that happen in the actual visit into the virtual visit. Now, what's a hybrid visit? It's divided into, it's a virtual and actual visit. It's divided into three phases, where the three, first phase is up to one month before the visit starts. And this is the document review process. The second phase is the actual virtual excuse me, I shouldn't say actual, it's the virtual visit. And it's for two days 
in the first week of, uh, of the visit. And then the third phase, which is the actual visit, which is one day in the following week of the virtual visit. So what happens during phase one, documents are, uh, all higher education institutions are required to upload all the documents and materials to be evaluated. And this is at least one month prior to the visit. A short video documenting all facilities and infrastructures and educational activities also uploaded. And the reviewers will review all documents and prepare a pre-visit report. That will be the guide to the actual visit later on. Um, now, the virtual visit takes place uh, for at least two conse consecutive days in of the same week. Higher education institutions are uh, responsible for providing and assuring that all online meeting online meetings are con conducted according to the schedule and this in itself is considered also as a sign of successful hybrid learning readiness unsuccessful meetings can be rescheduled during the same week online synchronous activities are also observed according to students learning schedules and as synchronous activities are also reviewed now the actual visit is conducted in the week following the virtual visit and is conducted for one day the schedule is based on the findings uh, of, the online, um, um, of the online document review and the virtual visits. Uh, it should be conducted by at least two members of the, review, of the uh, review experts. Other members, yet other members, are also following through live, via live streaming. And the schedule uh, is posted uh, on the Thursday before the, the, uh, at the end of the week before the visit starts. And the visit includes reviews of all documents that could not be uploaded, um, um, financial documents, educational resources, examination centers, and so on. Um, to support the system, uh, we developed or we produced two documents explaining the process and the guidelines for the new visit to both reviewers and education institutions. We prepared a questionnaire to be filled by higher education institutions as a measure to their readiness to apply hybrid education. We conduct two virtual meetings before the visit with the reviewers to update them uh, and respond to the questions. Uh, we offer online workshops and trainings for both institutions and uh, uh, reviewers. We conduct a virtual mock visit meeting before the visit starts, and we conduct for virtual uh, meetings with higher education institutions. And I should say that we also started meeting with our reviewers after these visits have been um, conducted, so as to make sure that they are um, to get the feedback. And it seems that things are working very well so far. And finally, to conclude, let me just leave you with these um, points. Are we monitoring the health of staff and students? What about if there's a new wave of the disease? Are we ready with Plan B? What policies and standards and guidelines are needed to cope with all this? What quality measures do we need to use? Local, we need to find local solutions, local fundings, because everybody is struggling and everybody is in the same boat. So somehow we cannot rely on someone else. They and I, how can you regulate and quality assure education in an unstable and unpredictable environment? Um, quality assurance, I need to one more time to assure that quality assurance needs a more stable environment to flourish. Hence, we must work on stabilizing the higher education ecosystem. We need to learn from the crisis and there is no going back. We must all acknowledge that online teaching and learning cannot substitute campus experience, nor it can it substitute face-to-face -face student teacher interaction or student to student interaction. Uh, moving forward, High quality assurance agencies need to evolve, revive, thrive. We need to update our accreditation systems to give more weight to online activities. We must evolve and go beyond our traditional quality assurance and accreditation law role and become to deal with capacity building and training. We need to work with higher education institutions to assure the quality of teaching and assessment. We need to learn from the current crisis and good practice. We need to maintain the stability and the sustainability of, quality, of, of our quality assurance agencies, and we need to make sure that quality assurance is able, uh, is equally available to all students, and by this I mean the weak and the disabled students as well. Finally, uh, we, we, we need to rely on the resil resilience and adaptability of our education institutions and quality assurance. We need to find local solutions. Collaboration, networking, and good practice is one part of the solution. Appropriate, we need to develop appropriate standards for quality uh, online education.
And finally, thank you. Stay safe, stay happy, stay healthy. And thank you for your, for, for your time.